Alexander Lelichenko, April 26, 1986, Chernobyl, Ukraine. Alexander Lelichenko was a shift supervisor at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in Pripyat when Reactor 4 exploded on April 26, 1986. His responsibility was the control systems and the cooling processes that kept the reactor stable. After the explosion, he realized something far worse was developing beneath the destroyed core. Water was still flowing into the reactor building. If molten nuclear fuel reached that water, it could trigger a massive steam explosion far larger than the first one. The release could have contaminated not only Pripyat, but a huge part of Europe. Lelichenko understood that the only way to stop this chain reaction was to manually shut down the pumps still feeding water into the destroyed reactor. The problem was simple and deadly. The corridors leading to those pumps were so radioactive that the dosimeters maxed out instantly. The devices couldn't even measure the exposure levels. Anyone entering would receive a lethal dose within minutes. Lelichenko went anyway. He walked through radioactive water three separate times, shutting down critical valves by hand. After the first day, he reportedly returned home and ate dinner with his wife as if nothing unusual had happened. Then he went back the next morning to continue the work. The exposure was catastrophic. He was hospitalized and died less than two weeks after the explosion. His actions prevented an even greater nuclear disaster from unfolding beneath the power plant. Harry Daglian, August 21st, 1945, Los Alamos, New Mexico, USA. Harry Daglian, a 24-year-old physicist, was working alone late at night at the Los Alamos laboratory. His assignment was to perform a criticality experiment on a 6.2 kilogram plutonium core. The setup was simple. Surround the core with tungsten carbide bricks to reflect neutrons back inward. The more bricks he added, the closer the assembly moved to a self-sustaining nuclear reaction. The entire experiment depended on stopping at the right moment. One brick too close meant criticality. By 9.55 p.m., Daglian had built several layers around the core. When he picked up another brick and moved it toward the assembly, the detector suddenly spiked into alarm. The core was on the edge of crossing the critical threshold. He had already gone too far but he still had the brick in his hand. Daglian instinctively tried to pull the brick back. That single motion was enough to break his grip. The brick slipped from his hand and fell directly onto the top of the core. A burst of neutrons flooded the room. Daglian reacted on instinct. Without any protective gear, he reached forward and knocked the brick off the assembly with his bare hand, stopping the reaction in seconds. Stopping the reaction saved the building but the exposure he took in those seconds would be fatal. Within hours, Daglian's right hand began to swell. The skin darkened from red to purple. Tissue death had already started. Over the next 25 days, Daglian's weight dropped from 160 pounds to 110. His nervous system deteriorated. He died on September 15, 1945. The plutonium core used that night was later nicknamed the Demon Core. His death forced Los Alamos to create new safety rules. No more solo criticality work, mandatory observers, and automatic radiation alarms on all experiment floors. And even with those rules, the Demon Core would strike again less than a year later. Luis Sloten, May 21, 1946, Los Alamos, New Mexico, USA. 35-year-old physicist Luis Sloten began a criticality demonstration inside a laboratory at Los Alamos National Laboratory. The procedure was something his colleagues had informally named Tickling the Dragon's Tail. It involved bringing two beryllium reflector shells extremely close around a plutonium core, stopping just short of triggering a critical nuclear reaction. The margin between safe and catastrophic was measured in millimeters. Sloten had performed this exact experiment many times before. The core he was using that afternoon was identical to a softball in size. It was also the same plutonium core that had fatally irradiated physicist Harry Daglian eight months earlier. Seven other scientists stood around Sloten, watching his demonstration. No one in the room realized they were seconds away from witnessing one of the most infamous accidents in nuclear history. 
Sloten held the upper reflector shell in one hand and used a flathead screwdriver with the other. The screwdriver's job was simple, prevent the top shell from fully closing over the core. As long as it held the gap open, the reaction would stay subcritical. At exactly 3.20 p.m., the screwdriver slipped. The top reflector dropped a few millimeters. That was all it took. The two halves snapped closer together, trapping the plutonium core inside a nearly complete neutron reflector. In that instant, the core went supercritical, releasing a burst of intense blue Cherenkov light into the room. Sloten acted immediately. Without hesitation, he reached in with his bare hand and knocked the upper shell away, breaking the configuration and stopping the runaway reaction. His decision saved the lives of the seven people standing around him. But the cost to Sloten himself was catastrophic. He looked down at his left hand, the one closest to the core, and the skin was already flushing red and beginning to swell. The radiation dose he had absorbed was far above survivable levels. Within minutes, Sloten began vomiting and experiencing severe nausea. His colleagues rushed him to the Los Alamos hospital. Doctors measured the exposure and delivered the news he already understood. He had taken more than twice the lethal dose of radiation. Sloten remained conscious for days, documenting his symptoms to help doctors treat future radiation victims. His organs began to fail one by one. On May 30, 1946, just nine days after the accident, Luis Sloten died from acute radiation poisoning. His death forced sweeping changes at Los Alamos. Manual criticality experiments were banned. Remote machinery replaced handheld tools. The demon core was melted down and never used in another experiment. The screwdriver that slipped ended the era of direct contact nuclear testing forever. Cecil Kelly, December 30th, 1958, Los Alamos, New Mexico, USA. Cecil Kelly was a 38-year-old chemical operator at the Los Alamos Plutonium Processing Facility. He had 11 years of experience working with nuclear materials. On December 30th, 1958, his job was to operate a large stainless steel mixing tank containing leftover plutonium solution from previous experiments. Under normal conditions, the tank solution should have contained an extremely low concentration of plutonium, less than 0.1 grams per liter. But on this day, without Kelly's knowledge, the concentration was more than 200 times higher than safe limits. The mixture inside the tank was already close to a critical configuration. When Kelly switched on the mixer, the spinning whirlpool pulled the plutonium-rich layer into the center of the tank. That sudden redistribution crossed the critical threshold. A flash of blue Cherenkov radiation erupted inside the tank for just 0.02 seconds. Even though Kelly stood behind a glass shield, the flash meant he had been exposed to an extremely high dose of radiation. Later analysis estimated the exposure at roughly 36 sieverts. The lethal limit for humans is around 8. Kelly immediately ran into the hallway, disoriented and in pain. When co-workers reached him, he was reportedly shouting that he was burning from the inside. He died approximately 35 hours after the accident.